is Mrs. Art and I am so happy that you're here today to make some art. Today we will be making prints on cardboard and we're going to use whatever cardboard you have at home. So it could be the inside of a cereal box or it could be a piece of cardboard that you have. It could be brown or it could be white. So we're going to ask your parents to go around and find a nice piece of cardboard to start our printing. We're going to use paint, which is my favorite part, and objects, things that you have at home with a really cool texture and surface to make our prints. I'm wondering, have you ever done a print before? And the other thing that I wanted to tell you before we get started is when you're done with your print on cardboard, keep it so that next week we're going to make something with that piece of cardboard. Let's get started. All right, boys and girls, I'm almost ready to start. So uh, the first step is to gather all your materials. And those materials for today will be pieces of cardboard. So the easy way to find cardboard is to collect boxes. For instance, this one is a Cheerio box. And usually the box is like this. So you're just going to open it up. And this will be the surface that we print on. So I have at least two um, so that you can try different you know different times and different objects to print so I have one two boxes if you were to find some at home that are white so I always keep all my boxes or at least the ones that I think are really nice when I get things in the mail so I have a white one here that I will print you could also use just regular cardboard which would be like this so gather the materials cardboard first then we're going to uh, gather all the other materials that we're going to print on so i have put a picture out for you so you can use things from home so this one is a potato masher um, any kind of circles that you have so these are lids this is a, t a smaller so use different sizes plastic cards so we can also make texture with our prints and this is just a, a square lid so go around your house kind of on a scavenger hunt to look for different things that you think would look good also um, these are tops of markers that do not use it that you're not using anymore and then we will also use fruits and vegetables so this one is a piece of corn um, this one is a lime and then potatoes are amazing because they become you can cut them easily with the, the help of a parent into shapes so this one will be a triangle and sometimes you can even carve into them so this one is my potato I cut it in half and then in here I just carved a heart and one more thing I forgot to share is of course we're going to use um, bubble wrap so whenever you get something in the mail if you get bubble wrap keep it aside so make a box with all the things that you want to keep and an extra um, toilet paper roll so you must have two if possible so now that we have our cardboard we have our supplies we're going to just review our paints so you could use um, whatever paints you have at home. I my preference is to use acrylic paint, and uh, but if you don't have acrylic paint, you can use tempera paint as long as it's kind of a thick paint or poster paint you might have. And you're gonna set it up in a large plate. So this one is a really pretty green. Um, this one is kind of an orangey red and then I'm gonna choose a purple so choose maybe three colors remember that if you are printing on brown the colors have to be a little bit darker so maybe a yellow will not show up on brown but it might show up on white so depending on the color that you're printing on choose you you know darker colors so we're gonna go and remember that it's always an experiment 
and it's better to do many because you can you know choose the ones that you like in the end so I'm going to start with one of my cardboards right here and I have actually one really important thing to do is to tape your cardboard with masking tape to the surface that's under so I'm just going to take a few pieces of tape and tape it to a paper so maybe you have newspaper at home and maybe you want to also wear an apron or um, a shirt that you don't care putting ink on so now that i have my paper ready i am going to start experimenting with my first prints so let's be organize your space is really important so that you can have everything ready when you're printing so i'm going to start with maybe the color red or orange and i'm going to start and think what would happen if i put my potato masher in here so make sure oh that looks really pretty and i'm going to put it here oh i love that color and I'm going to stamp this a few times. So remember the first one had a lot of paint. The second one, I didn't go back. So you want to go back maybe a couple times. And we're making patterns. So patterns repeat. That looks so good. I'm so excited. And you can continue your whole paper or actually cardboard using just one color or you can switch to another color. I'm going to actually switch just to make a different pattern with the same color. And this one will be more like a triangle. So I'm gonna see what happens with my triangle right here. Oh, it's a little bit gooey. So maybe I'm not gonna put any more. Oh, look at what happens if I do not re-ink. So you can always go back and add a little bit more paint here. These are really large, large, large triangles. See here. Let's see what happens if we tried. Um, this one is a really cool one. So this one is my lid. And let's see here. I push really hard. That turned out really good. And Maybe I just want to overlap them like that. So make sure you do whatever you print. I always like to make at least three of them. Okay, let me see. Now I'm going to see what would happen if I chose to make thin lines with my plastic card. So maybe this way. Oh, that looks really good. So every time I want to make a line, I'm going to go back to my plate and get some paint. And if I wanted my lines to be a little bit thinner, actually shorter, I'm going to use this side of the card. So I'm going to turn it the other way and go like this. And I'm going to make a pattern. Same thing on the other side. And maybe I'm going to go back and add the long way again right here. And maybe again, actually, I was doing the long way. So this is a big pattern right here. Now on this, I have a little spot here where I can experiment with my bubble wrap. So make sure that you're using the bumpy side. So here is my bumpy side and I'm going to take a large brush and just add a little bit of 
paint just right here. Let's see how it turns out. Now my bubble wrap is a little, it's kind of old, so I'm wondering if it's going to be, if it works the same. So I'm just going to push lightly. And we're going to lift it up. Oh, it's okay. It's not the best bubble wrap print I've seen, but it's okay. Again, I'm going to do it one more time. Remember, try to do it at least three times. Just because it's fun and also because it's it has to do with repetition. So, and balance. So maybe one more time here. It's still a little bit blur blobby. Let me try another piece. Maybe if I tried a different piece, it would be less. I'll try this one here. And let's put it right in here. It's a little bit better. It actually looks like a heart. Then we're going to try, let's see what happens if I take a toilet paper roll and I cut small cuts here along the edge and then you're going to turn it like this. Right now it kind of looks like an interesting flower. So I'm going to dip it into my paint and just stamp. So basically you want to push down on the edges of your flower so we can see the print. And if you want to do another one, I'm going to do another one here. Just going to push down. before I lift and then if you want to use the other side of your toilet paper roll you're gonna get a smaller circle and you can overlap again maybe a circle inside my square why not And maybe I can use, how about using our marker tops and seeing what happens. Now sometimes they have bubbles in here, so I want to, you can kind of pop it before to make, and what would happen if you don't pop it? If you don't pop it, you'll have kind of a bigger circle like that. So in here, I'm just going to add a few of those smaller circles and that will give me a lot of movement. And let's see, what else do we have? I think we're gonna try this one. This one is also a different size and it's got kind of a pattern right here. So let's see what happens. So I'm almost done with this print here and I didn't even have time to do um, all the vegetables. So I'm going to do another one, but I want to basically finish all the way around here. Let's see, what else could we add? Maybe I'm going to go back and add some of these lines so that there is a little bit of continuity in here. And long lines here. So this is a print done with just one color. The next one I'm going to show you, I'm going to do it with... Um, all right, I'm vegetables. ready to go for my second print. This time I'm going to try and see what would happen if I use a little bit of purple. So I see that my paint is a little bit chunky. So I am going to take a brush and kind of smooth it out and so that I get ready for my next experiment. 
and this time I'm going to use the corn and let's start with the corn so I'm just going to kind of roll it gently in here and just on one side and so I see that this is what it would look like so maybe what we should do is actually spread it a little bit like this and let's see what we get let's see what we get here this is going to be an experiment as usual I'm just gonna go down it didn't do much so maybe if I roll it it did a little bit more but not much I'm gonna do it again all right I'm gonna add a little bit more I think it worked a little bit better this time it's interesting because it all it looks a little bit like the bubble wrap so if I go like this this is the best one I've seen so far so I'm gonna leave that here and let's see what happens if we try with a lemon so I'm gonna put a little bit of <coughs> paint on my lemon and let's experiment again squeezing really strongly <gasps> you know what I can see the texture I can see it but do you see here what happened so I think I have to go back and add paint every time I'm gonna put it right here this is an interesting look so I'm gonna put this one aside and let's see what happens if I take the heart print so I'm gonna put paint over so try not to go inside the grooves, just on the top. And I'm gonna print right here. Squeeze down. Well, that was not very successful. I'm gonna try again. Maybe try it again on a different spot right here. That was a little bit better. All right, I'm gonna go back and see what else can I try that I haven't tried. I'm going to actually try a different color and I'm gonna use the things that I liked from last time. So I really liked my other print that we just did before. I really like this pattern. So I'm gonna go back in now this time it's going to be multiple colors in my print and maybe I could do it this way or I could do it the other way so this one is a horizontal zigzag and maybe they're going to be here too and here so this is where you know you kind of play around and decide where you think things would look really cool so I'm going to continue like that adding different elements and remember you can add one color two colors three colors it's up to you it's your print <laughs> boys and girls so to start our print we need to get our colors ready so I'm going to be using these three colors which are actually our primary colors blue red and yellow now I've already spread these ones out you want to make sure that they're nice and flat but I'm going to show you how I'm going to spread my yellow so you're going to just take a large brush and you're just going to spread it on your plate 
so that it's kind of a, a thin layer not too chunky and actually I think I might have put too much paint on this one so I'm going to try to really spread it out as much as I can and I'm going to keep this brush because we will use at some point the brush for some of the prints so I'm going to put my um, my paint on the side and in this example I'm going to be printing on white cardboard so I have to attach it with a piece of tape to make sure it doesn't move when we're printing so the, of course the tape color doesn't matter but you know I love color so when I buy tape I choose color tape so here is my cardboard I'm gonna start with and here's my plate with all the different things that I found that I will use for my print and this one is really really cool so I'm gonna start with this one so the the trick with printing one of the tricks is that you're gonna put your object inside you know just press it nicely and make sure the surface is full of paint which this one is really full of paint now when you put it on your cardboard you have to press really hard and not move and not wiggle so I'm just going to press and press really hard and stay 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 and then lift it up well that looks so cool now if you like it you could do it again so I'm gonna do it again with the same color and maybe I'm gonna go off my cardboard which means just only a little bit we'll see but again push really hard for a little bit press pressure and lift now did you notice that each time I go back to get some paint it's really important otherwise it will not show up that much so I'm gonna go in ahead and add another one right here and I press really hard and then I'm gonna lift it up and when I'm done with my object I'm gonna put it aside and maybe get something else I found a little bit a piece of Lego and I thought okay let's see what happens so I'm gonna put it in the paint again and before you go so I see that it's a little bit smudged but it's okay it's an experiment let's see what happens I'm gonna put it on the side here press and then go oh that was pretty cool actually I really like it so if I like it I'm gonna go ahead and make more of these just like that and I'm gonna make three so try to make at least three of each pattern which this is a pattern and let's experiment with something else how about a mushroom so i'm going to start maybe with my blue now in this case i could take actually a paintbrush and or not let's see what happens if i just go straight into the paint oh so do you see this part here so i have to really make sure that it's completely covered oh there we go it is completely covered but maybe that's a little bit too much paint so you can remove a little bit with your paintbrush and then let's see what happens with my mushroom again I'm gonna press and just stay well, that was not very good so if that happens you can actually go back again and the reason this happened is that the mushroom is not even so maybe part of it is kind of raised so i'm going to try to push down 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 oh that's so much better so i'm going to actually repeat that one i am encouraged by the mushroom now and maybe make it kind of so push 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 it's pretty good and i'm going to do one more right now it kind of looks like a dancing mushroom and maybe one more push 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 all right awesome awesome let's try so here's the tin this is just a lid 
I like it because it's square. It's a little bit different. And I'm going to experiment with red. So I just put it in the red. Make sure it's nice. Oops, not too much. And then I push, push, push. Nice. So I'm going to continue like that using different objects. And remember the trick is to put a lot of paint and press hard long enough without moving. And do at least three. Now look at what I found. I bet you have some of these. They're just wooden blocks with different shapes. So I'm going to use this. You could use this part, which would be a small rectangle. You can use this part, which would be a long rectangle. Same thing for my triangle and my square. So I'm going to use these as shapes. <laughs>